Uh, we're uh, we're I, live. I woke this. I woke up this morning and I was feeling. I, I read the news on Roquan Smith and I was getting emotional. The reason why I really stopped being a Bears fan was because I was getting too emotional about the team. And you know, I read about why uh, why Roquan Smith wanted to trade out of Chicago and how it seems like they were lowballing him. Mm. And uh, and I was getting like angry and emotional again. Like I was. Ha- I, I'm. Ha- I'm. I'm never going to be a Bears fan again. And this is one of the reasons why. Uh, but like, I felt terrible for Roquan that he was kind of getting treated unfairly. I guess I understand why the Bears are trying to lowball him because they're trying, to, you know, save some money. But I just, I hate that. I, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, this is this is tough for you. I I it, think that's the point. Is that I don't the- want it to be tough for me because being a Bears fan was tough for me a decade ago, and I, like those feelings were coming back. It was making me feel. If weird. a team is still I making you emotional then you're still a fan yeah i'm not i'm really not then you're then you're not really emotional then i don't i'm just not buying it anyway this is our youtube intro we're gonna do some wacky <clears throat> wacky things on our youtube intro that guy in the top right that's thomas schaefer he's our new producer you're gonna hear from him a little bit later bye thomas <laughs> <We'll bring laughs> during the actual podcast which is starting right now hit hit like hit subscribe find out more about dave's emotions on fantasy no we don't have to talk about it on the pod right now all right, it is running back time. The first of two episodes previewing the running back position. We're going to talk about what we look for in a first round running back. We're going to talk about how successful the round one running backs have been. I think there were nine running backs drafted in the first round last year, and only one of them finished as a top eight running back, and that was Austin Eckler. And that is really a, a tough pill to swallow and makes you think, hey, maybe if I'm feeling a little icky later in the first round, maybe I should just gravitate toward a wide receiver. But we'll, we'll break it all down for you. Um, running back and wide receiver, I feel like they're so linked. So we'll talk about both of them on today's show, but it is mostly a running back preview. Oh, good morning, Dave and Heath. How do you What's feel up, about dude? running back position? Give me an overall assessment of running back in 2022, Dave. I think it's pretty plentiful, actually. This this isn't the same like it's been in the past couple of years where you get real sick by the time you get to round four or five and you're you're taking wild chances later on in the draft. I think there's some really good values. I think the dead zone is actually going to get pushed down a little further than we're used to. And I think when you get to the mid rounds, we're talking rounds eight, nine, ten, there's going to be running backs available who you can potentially start in week one, guys like Rashad Penny, uh, to other running backs that have uh, ginormous upside, even if I don't think they do. Running backs, rookies like Damian Pierce and Tyler Algier. That I, I think that this is a good year. If you ever, if you ever, and I think my rankings reflect this. I really do. If there was ever a year where you didn't want to take a running back in the back half of round one, and you wanted to try a receiver, this is a great year to do it. And in fact, it's a great year to take two non-running backs if you're picking. If you have two of the top. 18 picks in your draft wow two non-running backs okay okay i've done it i've done it in our mocks and i i really have not regretted it because i turned to running backs in rounds three and four and i'm usually very happy adam were you in any of those mocks (laughs) i think the the last time in with dave is like Oh, maybe not. I think I got come. I think I actually took two running backs in the first last one. Did. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pass on a Dalvin Cook or a Joe Mixon if they slide in round one. Those are running backs that I would take toward the middle of round one. And yeah. I, I, you guys are still letting Alvin Kamara slide in round two, and I'm taking him in round two every time. Yeah, and most uh, many of the top twelve running backs at the end of the year were round one or two picks. I'll give you that stat in a little bit, but it's a pretty convincing case to grab at least one running back with your first two picks. Heath, what's your overall assessment of running back this year? I mostly agree with Dave that it's deeper. I think maybe part of the reason that it's deeper is it doesn't feel like we have 12 surefire RB1s at all. I'm probably getting ready to move Saquon Barkley into my uh, top 12 running backs this week, and man, do I not feel good about that. And then also you get to the RB2s at, at the end of that range, and it's just this group of guys that we keep moving down but there's only so far you can move him down because you get to another guy that you move down, the Antonio Gibson, the Cam Akers, the Josh Jacobs. Um, so it's a bunch of guys that nobody wants to draft. And I think that makes it more believable that the guys who are being ranked in the 30s at running back could be top 24 guys pretty easy. Do you like that group now? Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers, Antonio Gibson? 
I wouldn't say I like them, but I love it when one of them falls to round six. It's fantastic. What about round five? I just people. took David Montgomery in round five in a draft. Wow. Wow. What about what about round five in a 12-team league? So it picks 49 through 60. Josh Jacobs, Antonio Gibson, Cam Akers. Uh, I like Gibson the best right now, but I have all three of them rank in my top 60. So I'm fine with them in round five. I love them in round six. I still don't have Akers in my top 60. In fact, he's 70th for me. Heath, what are you looking for in a round one running back? I would like two out of three, all three if I can get it, but two out of three, elite efficiency, elite volume, elite offense. Dave, what are you looking for in a round one running back? Someone who's going to help me win my fantasy league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Score lots of points. Uh, I want a running back that I feel great about finishing as a top five guy. So Jonathan Taylor, we, we've talked about, I think we talked about it on yesterday's show. Like as far as the number one overall running back, his production per game was pretty low, but I feel like he's the safest bet of all the running backs to finish as a top five guy. And so that's why he's number one for me. I'm not worried about health. You talked about elite efficiency. You talk about elite offense and you talk about elite, uh, production i don't think those are exactly the three things that he said he's looking for but jonathan taylor has that stuff so he's first for me for that reason consequently i don't have christian mccaffrey there because i'm not as sure that he's going to be a top five running back by the time we get to the end of the season he has the potential to i admit that for sure but i, I don't know if he's gonna end up doing it because of the track record the last two years because of injury not because of performance right yeah, of course. Right. But but I think the the injuries are something that his coaches are going to keep in mind. And I, I, I'm willing to say that his workload, at least to begin the year, is scaled back from what we're used to seeing in 2019 and 2018. Or what Man, we saw. I, I have a hard time buying that only because I think his coach is getting fired if he doesn't have a good year. Matt Rule kind of said some pretty optimistic things about Christian McCaffrey. Look, what the one word he said we're thinking is attack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. That's what he said. That's pretty yeah. good. There, I don't know if they're going to hold him back, but he's he was so much better than everyone uh, over the last few years, and even last year. You know, if you just look at his healthy games, yeah, he missed. He yeah, played a lot of twenty five point games. Yeah, if, I think five of the six games that he did not leave with an injury, he scored twenty four point nine or more PPR fantasy points, and that. 24.9 right. or more. That's more than what Jonathan Taylor averaged. That's more than what almost every running back is going to average in full PPR. He's just, he is just too good. And that's why on Sunday you heard Heath say he moved uh, McCaffrey to number one. Um, all right. What, we're going to get more into this later, but just a quick little drive by here. What's the best. If you had to pick one. Oh, well, first of all, how do we define zero RB? No running backs until round. I do round six. This no running backs it. until you 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 can go past round six until you see one at a value who you think no. you can start right away. No, I no, but that. I think if you round take one of the first has to be the minimum. Yeah, the, minimum. Minimum. the first four rounds is for sure. Not. I've got one more Christian McCaffrey. Alex Caruso tweeted this yesterday, and it was or it was amazing to me. He has finished top two in forty three percent of his last twenty one games where he did not get hurt. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. He has been a, the best or Great. second best running back in almost half of the games he's played and not left early. Okay, so uh, if if zero RB, if we're going to define it, define it as no running backs until at the earliest round five, what is the best strategy to go with? Zero RB, hero RB, which is one running back with your first two picks, I, I think is kind of how we define it. And then then you can kind of take a break but right yeah or dave rb <laughs> <laughs> well uh, uh, i will i will take i will take dave rb when there's uh good running back values uh based on adp slash what i think with each of my first three picks i'm terrible at these questions always because i refuse to lie to you the best strategy will be determined on draft day by what your league does. Right. I just have a bit of an issue with that. Because, I know, but it's true. But it's not true because you don't know what your league is going to do in rounds. Exactly. Six. So why would you? Hold on. Hold right. on. He's, you don't know he's right on this you one. Know, Adam, no, I'm no, sorry. no. Hold on. The, 
sorry, I'm okay. You know I'm going to queue up a soundbite soon. Um, <laughs> you don't know what your league is going to do in rounds three, four, and five when you're picking in round two. And you have to try to make the best guesses about what's going to be available for you. And, you know, recently mm. we did that pick by pick series and I had the eighth pick in a three receiver PPR league with a flex. And I went with Joe Mixon and in the second round, I went with DeAndre Swift. So my next best wide receiver would have been Keenan Allen or Mike Evans, CeeDee Lamb, Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams. They were off the board in round two. So I said, oh, fine, I'm just going to take my favorite player here. It's DeAndre Swift. I hated my team. Because then in round three, I went with Kyle Pitts. So my team started in a three-receiver PPR league. My team started Mixon, Swift, Pitts. And then I was left with Cortland Sutton. This was before the Tim Patrick injury. But Cortland Sutton, which I, I love. Then DK Metcalf, Alan Lazard. Those are my three starting wide receivers. Well, why'd you take Alan Lazard in round six? No, I think I took him in round six. Yeah, he might have taken a quarterback or something. Uh, in round yeah, six. maybe round, maybe I don't remember. But that's where that's where he was in the rankings. You know those drafts, the it, three receiver league in in our pick by pick, the receivers go crazy. I, I didn't like the way the team turned out, but I would point out that if it had been a two receiver league, I'm really less concerned about that round two decision. I'm much. I mean, I'm probably not, I'm probably going to go running back, wide receiver, or wide receiver, running back with my first two picks. But in a two receiver league, if I go running back, running back, I feel like I'm fine. In a three receiver league. I know this is a running back preview, but I feel like I really feel like in a three receiver league, I really want to, I'm not going to say need to really want to have one wide receiver with my first two picks, which would eliminate an RB RB start. I don't know how you guys have felt about that, but um, I will not and, and disqualify myself from any particular starts. I'm not going to disqualify myself. By the way, this is really kind of more if you're drafting late uh, in the first round, but no. Yeah, no, I want I want like an no, anchor. No, no. I want an anchor wide receiver in a three receiver league. I need that. Can't go too long without that receiver. But I think you kind of have that with Cortland Sutton. I I like Sutton as a, I think he's good enough to be a I, number okay. one receiver for your team, especially when you've got two top ten running backs in PPR. Those two with your first two picks. To me, you you maximized your value at the thinnest position in fantasy with Mixon and Swift. And as long as they're both on the field, man, you're you're talking what was mixing last year? Seventeen PPR points per game. But we say and that Swift when he's hot is north of back, that. Running backs get hurt so often. I mean, last year when I started Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley with the seventh or eighth pick in our FFT league, which is again three receivers, I loved it. I I was thrilled with it. You and should have been. Sucked. No, I shouldn't have been. I well, mean, no, you ended up hating it because yeah. Saquon got hurt early, and then and, Derrick and Henry got hurt at midseason. So if running, running back and so here's the position, lesson, the lesson, the I think you've position. learned something about yourself here, Adam. Yeah. I think you're a zero RB guy. No, no, I'm a hero. No, I think guy. you No, I, I don't think so because RB guy. you, you fear the fragility of running backs. When I draft two of them with my first two picks and leave myself thin at wide receiver. Yes. You but, you're fearing it. You're scared of it. It's okay to be scared of it. A lot I'm of people scared. are. And it, it Dave's lot, scared I, of it. It's the reason he's not taking Christian McCaffrey. Number one. Well, right. Sure. Just, you can say that in the case of McCaffrey, but it's not why I'm going to run away from running backs in rounds one, two, three, four. I don't run away from them, but I think you need to be strong at wide receiver if you play in a three receiver league. And also, Dave, but you are, this. you are, you got First Scotland sutton has got a chance to be a top please, over. Out. I got to tell you, Dave, this was before the Tim Patrick injury. I don't know that Cortland Sutton would be there if we did that draft again, but um, I think I need you to help me out here because you said, most of our leagues are two receiver leagues, right? In CBS? Yes. Huge majority of our leagues, quarterback, two running backs, two receiver, one tight end, one flex. Yeah, and that's a huge difference to me. I mean, uh, sure. you know, that's a huge difference with those first two picks. I'm much more open-minded about running back, running back uh, in a two-receiver league than a three-receiver league. Are you guys? Does it matter to you? Yes, it matters. Yeah. I think about it a little bit more. I would rank three wide receiver receivers league. low in a two, lower in a two wide receiver league. I mean, it sounds so simple, but I feel like we have to do a better job of that on this show. We get in a little bit of a bubble of this three receiver thing, which is kind of an industry. I don't know. When we do our industry leagues, they're all three receiver leagues. When we do our CBS leagues amongst our staff. But the numbers say most of you listening are in a two receiver league with a flex. Oh, most people playing on CBS. Yeah, but don't you think that's the case on other sites too? I think no. it is. I, I really, 
Um, I think that's largely based when you talk about most, it's based on the standard settings of a league of a site. Do you mm -hmm. know what the standard settings are on other sites? I, I could find it, but it sounds oh, like a lot a of work. Deal, that's right? not it's worth a big it. deal. But, and, right. and it, it relates to running back too. It's not just about receivers, but all right. Um, let's, uh, so this is part one. Part one is going to be more of an overview, more of a strategy show. Uh, there are some things uh, tomorrow. We'll do a complete average draft position review. There are some things I need to promote right now. Some very exciting things, including a chance to get in the podcast league, a chance to have a pre-draft phone call with Dave or Heath or Jamie, a chance to have me announce the first round of your draft uh, and a chance to donate to an amazing cause. I'm talking about our draft -a -thon. This will be our fifth annual draft -a -thon to benefit St. Jude. Uh, looking like August 31st. I don't know if we've completely 100% locked in that date, but we'll let you know as we get closer. We'll let you know probably this week. But we have now an eBay store, and I'm gonna I, I'm planning on linking to it in the episode description. I'm just waiting for the approval, the go ahead there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. If you want to go to our eBay store, all of it's going to St. Jude. So we're trying to raise as much money as we can, and we need your help. This is the most important thing. So that we're gonna do all year. Help us out. You can bid on some amazing things. You can bid on a spot in the podcast league and a guest appearance on this podcast. So, uh, again, look for the link in the episode description. And it's only August 9th right now, so we're going to pepper you with this information for the next three weeks, so you'll be all set. Um, we have a live stream tonight, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're not on YouTube right now, youtube.com slash today, 8 p.m. Eastern. This is a live salary cap draft. Used to call them aux auctions. Salary cap draft live tonight. If you're curious, what do I do? What's the best strategy? We've got industry experts coming on to help us out. So join us at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. And we've got a big addition to the show. Shaggy B is gone. He has left us for greener pastures. So he thinks. Shafee T <laughs> is here. Thomas <laughs> Schaefer. That's, I got to give a listener credit for that one. Shafee T. Thomas Schaefer is our new producer. You're going to see some fancy graphics today. Thomas is going to help us out on YouTube. He's going to help us out with the audio as well. And welcome to the show, Thomas. How are you, man? I'm good, man. Just hanging out, enjoying the first day on the new job. Um, for people that don't know me, obviously, it's first day on the job. Um, I've been at CBS Sports since 2018. I started off as a production assistant, moved to AP, and now I'm here with these guys. So I've been playing fantasy football since I was like in third grade. Those free Yahoo leagues, that's, that's where I got my start. So this is really a dream come true to be working with you guys. When you oh, were in third yeah. grade playing fantasy football, you were using Dave's rankings, right? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even, back then there weren't even, as you guys know, there weren't really, unless you're paying for a site, um, there weren't like live uh, leaderboard or uh, scoring, I should say. So you'd have to wait until Monday to see where you were with everything. But What yeah. year was third grade? Uh, I'm not really great with math, but uh, roughly 2001, 2002. Okay. Well, so how old does that make you? I'm 30. Oh, okay. You're older than Schrager. That's good. Schrager's yeah, yeah, yeah. 14. Uh, seeing some comments here. Yahoo standard is two receivers. ESPN standard is two receivers. Okay. So, so we do have to really, you know, talk about that and how most of you or many of you are playing in two receiver leagues. And that, that could certainly impact your strategy here. Um, Thomas, thank you. We'll be hearing from you, of course, all throughout the season. And we're thrilled to have you here. And we're going to do awesome things. And it's going to be thanks to Thomas Schaefer. So appreciate it, man. Of course. Uh, we'll move him into the shadows. Oh, sorry. I think I, I should do a Twitter poll. Uh, there we go. How do you want me to phrase this? How many wide receivers do you start? Are you required to start in your most important league? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Um, all right. Let me give you guys some interesting running back stats. Where do the top 12 running at backs get drafted? Most of them are in rounds one and two. We have had seven to nine top 12 running backs drafted in the first two rounds, five straight years. So last year it was nine. That number is actually eight if you count Cordero Patterson. But I do believe, Dave, he was just a wide receiver at the start of the year, right? He was. Yeah, so I'm counting that as nine. So that is four, five straight seasons where seven or nine, seven, nine, seven, seven, nine, uh, top 12 running backs, top 12 finishers at running back were drafted in the first two rounds. And that's where you're going to see your workhorses, your very good players, you know, the things that Heath was talking about, efficiency, 
uh, touches and offense, you're going to see that combination in the first two rounds. And that is why hero RB, I think, has become more favorited than zero RB. Um, how many top 12 running backs in PPR have been drafted in round seven or later in the last six seasons? Hey, this is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Six years ago, it was four. And that's the most we've had in that stretch. This is, again, is top 12 running backs in PPR. Finishers, not per game, top 12 overall running back. At the end of the year, how many were drafted around seven or later? Six years ago, there were four of them. Then two, then three, then zero, then two, then two. Uh, and again, you're using full season statistics, right? Yeah, I'm using full season. I would assume they would do much better in per game statistics since when those guys hit, it's part of right. a season usually. That's always, I mean, that's always part of it. Um so, you know, it's hard to account for a guy like Elijah Mitchell and Daryl Henderson, who didn't even finish top 24 last year. But they obviously were very valuable, depending on when you got Henderson ended up being like a fourth round pick. But Mitchell obviously wasn't. But I'm just saying the guys who finished top 12 and I think showing that you can handle a full workload and stay healthy and be on the field is not something that just any running back can do. So I think finishing top 12 is impressive. Um, there have been very few, usually about two a year that finish top 12 and are drafted after round seven in a 12 team league. Really not that many. And this has been kind of a change too. how many top 24 running backs in PPR were drafted after round seven in the last six years, 10, eight, 10. And then in the last three years, we've had one, six and six running backs finishing top 24 drafted after round seven. Well, that includes guys you picked up off the waiver wire. Absolutely. The, the That's just, too slow. They don't, well, it kind of does, except when you're talking full season, how many guys that are going to touch the ball more than 10 times a game are available after round seven in week one? Like, they're, well, all, these sure. guys are That's always fair. starting. I think if we use per game again, it would be a, a much different story. Okay. Oh, you do not a have to be, slightly different you do not story. have to be, uh, you know, you do not have to be ready to go week one to finish top 24. It's a pretty low bar to finish top 24. And it just, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a case against waiting too long on running back and just assuming you're going to be fine. You know, you, cause I don't, it depends how you see it. Like Alexander Madison did not finish top 24, but he did potentially win you three weeks, three weeks last year. Cause when he filled in for cook, he was incredible. That doesn't show up in this stat, but it's just something that we know. Um, so Do you I know, know what the, the number 24 running back had in total yards and touchdowns last year. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. Eight touchdowns, uh, 989 yards. There it is. Can you name the player, Adam Azer? No. You can get him after round seven this year. No. Or I at can't. least today. Kareem James Hart. Robinson. Oh, James Robinson, yeah. Um. All right. Well, anyway, there's For that. all the crap that Urban Meyer put us through. How many 50 catch running backs have we had over the last six seasons? This one really jumps out at me, guys. 50 catch running backs in the last six years. 12, 14, 16, 13. And the last two years, we have eight and six 50 catch running backs. Hmm. That stinks. It does, but it also makes you feel less icky when you take a running back who doesn't catch the ball. Or does it? You tell me how to interpret this. Four, 14 combined 50 catch running backs over the last two seasons. And in the four years before that, we had 12, 14, 16, mm -hmm. and 13. So it's just for whatever reason, but McCaffrey's been hurt. Barkley's been hurt. Camaro. I don't know how many he finished with last year, but he was hurt last year. Um, Those quarterbacks didn't throw to him once Jameis got hurt. Also true. So, you know, does, does that change your perspective on things guys? I still want a running back that's going to catch the ball 50 times. If I could have my druthers, the way to overcome that is to have a running back. That's got a shot at 2000 total yards and 16 plus touchdowns. Does it, However, make, you, does it make you less shy about say Nick Chubb in PPR? No, I would say a little, but I I'm really, I'm not thinking about it a lot. I still think it's not great that Nick Chubb isn't a candidate for, uh, 40 catches, much less 50. Um, I might feel more confident in Nick Chubb if he still had Deshaun Watson or Baker Mayfield or, or somebody like that at quarterback. Okay, but I guess do catches still matter? 
How much do yes. catches matter for you? For they them? they obviously well, what's the league scoring? PPR. The more points you get for a catch, the more they matter. Obviously. I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to deduce that, but um last year we had five running backs. Uh actually I think we had three or three or four running backs finish in the top five with forty two or fewer catches. So Connor was in there, Taylor was in there, Nixon, I think, had forty two catches. Um yeah, it was ta- it was Taylor. Sorry, three of the top five. Taylor, Mixon, and Connor had 40, 37 to forty two catches. They finished in the top five. So yeah, I don't know. Things are things are changed in that regard, right? Heath, the teams are throwing to their running backs less frequently now. Uh, yeah, there's been a little decrease in that. Now I don't know if it will continue into this year, but there has been the last couple of years. Okay, guys, I'm going to get your strategy uh, thoughts and feedback here and. Yes, even Heath will contribute to this. It'll be vague enough, um, the questions anyway. But before we do that, we have, Heath, you can help me out with this. We have a delicious sponsor to tell you about. It is hot as heck outside, and you need to stay hydrated, and you need to drink liquid IV. I've got a lot of liquid IV in my place. We, We stock up. It's basically a stick of powder that you add to a glass of water. You stir it up, and it's freaking delicious, and it keeps you nice and hydrated. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 15% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code FFT at checkout. Liquidiv.com and the code is FFT at checkout. That is 15% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using the promo code FFT at liquidiv.com. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. And, it, and uh, the products taste great. They have 10 refreshing flavors. They've got Concord Grape, Lemon Lime, Pina Colada, Tropical Punch, five essential vitamins in there, three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's got premium ingredients. There's non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. I'll add some liquid IV before I head out, you know, because it's just so hot out. So I'll have a glass of water. I'll put some liquid IV in there. I'll, I'll drink it down, um, take it with me or whatever. Of course, if you exercise, this is great. And Heath, I know we talked about this last year. Uh, you got your liquid IV and you crushed it. Oh, I, I absolutely love it. I, I use it for two different purposes. There's the healthy Heath purpose and the unhealthy Heath purpose. <laughs> um, if, I, if I'm a little dehydrated from the day before, I will use it to uh, recover. And it's a fantastic recovery tool for dehydration. However, you might come into dehydration. And it's also fantastic, though, this right now, because I went and ran a couple miles this morning. And, you know, you go running in the South Florida heat. Yeah. You will sweat out like 100 glasses of water. Yeah. <laughs> come home, have some liquid hydration. You're all good again. There you go. All right. Grab your liquid IV again in bulk nationwide at Costco or go to liquidiv.com. Use the code FFT at checkout and get 15% off anything you order. FFT is the code at liquidiv.com. Here are some running back questions for you. What is, uh, I guess we kind of went through this. Uh, So that's the zero hero or Dave RB question. We'll skip that. Um, How does your strategy change in non half full PPR Heath? What should we do in those different formats? I will not do zero RB in non PPR. I probably won't do it in half PPR unless I can get like cup Jefferson or Jefferson Kelsey at the one, two turn. Um, so that's the first thing I, I'm okay with starting with three running backs in a row in non and half PPR three, but not necessarily. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Three in a row. I'm sorry. I was thinking the zero RB. If you went zero RB, if you waited until round five to take your first running back in a 12 team league, what kind of running backs do you think you'd end up with? If I waited until round five in a non PPR league, uh, no, I'm sorry, in a PPR league or half, half or, or full. Um, well, I do that all the time. You, Antonio Gibson, Cam Akers, Josh Jacobs, sometimes David Montgomery. Um, then you grab a little Tony Pollard or AJ Dillon for some some league winning upside. Maybe a Damian Pierce or a Tyler Algier, but that's that's the group you end up with. Miles Sanders in that group for you, Heath. Miles Sanders is quickly falling out of that group. Miles Sanders is now behind Damian Pierce. Um, I, I oh my wow. god, are you serious? Why would he? Why would he not be? Okay, so what, what is the case for Miles Sanders? Well, how much stock are we putting in this contributor contributor to SI that wrote that Kenneth Gainwell could have short yardage touches? 
Well, and then, and then he's likely to have high leverage touches, including short yardage. Because if I, if you bought that, then I could see freaking out. But I just I don't well, why, the fact why. that Miles Sanders scored zero touchdowns last year, and they're talking about someone else getting short yardage touch touches, does concern me. The fact and that Boston already... Scott has more touchdowns in three years in Philadelphia than Miles Sanders does it's does concern me. The fact that they, that this organization, this this regime, chose Kenneth Gainwell and has shown no indication that they have any fondness for Miles Sanders does I don't does give me concern. That's not fair. He was their absolute lead running back last year, and there is just no question about it. I mean, if you look at the the splits, I know he got extremely unlucky with the touchdowns, but he was their alpha dog last year when he was healthy. You know, they favored him. He had more work, and he's just – I don't know, man. He, he's got – we don't talk about this enough, but many people think the Eagles have the best offensive line in football. So taking there was another Amy, report. Amy and Pierce over Miles Sanders is like, whoa, it's just shocking. Just surprising. There, just surprising. There's another report, not just that, and I don't remember who it was from, that if the Eagles were going to trade for one position, it would be a running back. <laughs> I just think, like, I know we drafted Miles Sanders in the first round at one point, but that was probably our fault. I'm not drafted. I'm not drafting him in the first round. No, I don't think it was our fault. I think it made sense based on the way he finished his rookie. He's season. He's never even averaged 14 carries per game. He did in his rookie season after Jordan Howard got hurt, and that's what you look he for. He needed Jordan Taylor. Howard to get hurt. All right, but that's what you saw from from Jonathan Taylor. That's what you saw. If like, case in point, if Melvin Gordon were not on the Broncos, people would be taking Javante Williams in round one. Because you're projecting that breakout. That's what we did with Miles Sanders. He he finished his rookie year so well that we thought, oh, okay, this is going to be the next breakout running back. Was, we were wrong, but I think there was nothing wrong with the logic behind I'm it. I'm just saying it, we've had two years since then. Yeah. Okay, of, but Damian Pierce, that's surprising, that's all. <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm obviously higher on Damian Pierce than anybody, and I don't have my top 24 running backs. But... Um, I don't have Miles Sanders in my top 30. They have talked to me about 10 team leagues and 14 team leagues compared to 12 and how things change there. Well, supply and demand changes quite a bit in both of those formats. If it's a 10 team league, it's a smaller league. So there's going to be a, a more, uh, an abundance of players that'll be available who you'll like as you go later on in drafts. I always like to try and build the most stacked team I possibly can. Uh, well, in every league, but it's easier to do in a 10 team league and you kind of change your focus a little bit. You can wait a little bit on running back and wide receiver if you wanted to in that smaller league. In the deeper league, uh, if you crave a specific position, you kind of need to target it early on just so you have it. That's the type of league where I might be more open to going zero or hero RB because I can fill some other positions a little bit easier and then try and just, you know, find my way to a number two running back or a, you know, a flex running back as, as the season goes on or as the draft rolls on. That's interesting. I'm usually very afraid of being bad at running back in a, in a 14 team league, like our podcast league, 14 team PPR, and it's only two receivers, but I hate not being good at running back because they're so hard to find. You're not going to be able to find anything on waivers. And then when there is something on waivers, everybody wants that. Yep. And back. there's two and more competitors right. to get them. Exactly. So let's talk about that again. So you're, you'd be more likely to wait on running back in a deep league. I'd consider it just, it, I, I, I prefaced it by saying if I really wanted to be, you know, great at tight end. So in a 14 team league, your advantage at tight end, if you end up with Kelsey or Andrews or theoretically Pitts, is much greater because there's more fantasy managers that'll end up having to stream tight ends all season long. If you crave that, or if you want to have two stud receivers in a 14 team league, then you got to do what you got to do. You only draft one running back or none with your first four picks. And subsequently, you got to say if you crave running backs, hi. You know, you, you want to go and, still, and, and pick up some out. running backs early on, but then you're, good, you're you gonna definitely going to be weaker everywhere else. I understand that, but what are you going to do? What I want to know is you've laid out these scenarios. What's, what's It's the same thing I do in every draft, though, and this is why Keith's you know, soapbox on not having a specific strategy when you go in. You can have an idea on what positions you really want to focus on, the positions that matter to you. You might be a Travis Kelsey guy. You might have won a fantasy league last year because of Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey, you're going to gravitate 
back to that because it worked for you. Or maybe you stream tight ends last year. I do year. not think you are answering my question. I, I'm answering it very long winded. Let me go. What do you do in a 14 team league? I take the best available player with okay. every pick I have. I don't go into it saying I got to get running back covered. If I've got an early or a middle first round pick, I'm definitely taking a running back. But if it's late round one, even in a 14 team league and Cooper Cup is staring me in the face or Jefferson or even Kelsey's, Kelsey's definitely a first round pick in a 14 team league. I'm going in that direction. And I know well, what did I say at the very beginning of this very podcast? Running back is decently deep this year. You can wait a little bit. You can get a Damian Pierce later on. You can get a Miles Sanders later on if you're drafting with 13 other Heaths. Okay. At least so he's a starter to begin it, the let season. Let a little bit differently. Um, in a 14-team league, are you trying to come out of the draft stronger at running back? Like, you're not, not necessarily in your I'm first. I'm trying to do that in every draft I'm in, right. dude. And I could be in a six-team league. Heath, do you think in de- in ten-team leagues it's easier to just say screw it? I'm going best player available, basically. Uh, well, you know that I'm pretty much easier than it normally is. Yes, <laughs> but um, well, I I'll try to answer your question because I'm I'm bad at these questions. But in a ten-team league, I'm even less likely to worry about the running backs that have had injury problems. And okay. I'm just shooting for upside running backs. In a 14 team that, league, I might settle sense. for some more boring touch guys. Gotcha. All right. And we already talked earlier in the show about two receiver leagues versus three receiver leagues and how that impacts running back. But uh at running back, you know, if you're if you're nervous about being weak at wide receiver, it's obviously much easier to to justify it in a two a two receiver league where, you know, but in a three receiver league, I at least would like to. Never, I never say, you know, this has to happen. Would like to have one wide receiver um, through my first two picks, but I'm doing a draft right now, and my first two picks are running backs. Derrick Henry in round one at ninth overall. Brilliant. Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones in round two. I just couldn't pass it up. It was exactly. Be- yeah. Exactly. Right. I, I um, feel like you, you, you're struggling a little bit here, Adam. So I'm, you were right. There are more people that follow me on Twitter who play in two wide receiver leagues and three wide receiver leagues. It's not the vast majority, but currently 55-41 through 484 votes. Then the question just becomes, are you nervous about going running back, running back, because running backs are so volatile and get hurt? I don't yeah. ever feel nervous about my fantasy football team. I don't feel nervous well about anything. At, about, I said about my fantasy football team. I know, team. but you, I, I don't think you get nervous about anything. You're one of the most laid-back people I know. Um, now there's a couple of things that give me a little anxiety, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think like just, I am really strongly believe this and we've had this argument before as well. Cause a couple of years ago, it was when I would take a quarterback and a tight end in the first five rounds. And that always meant either your running backs or your wide receivers were going to be bad. And you used to hate that. And I think you, you may still hate it. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's okay to be bad at a position. If you're awesome at three positions. It's yeah. you can make up for deficiencies at one position. Just Dave could make up for deficiency at wide receiver. He could have three number three wide receivers that score 12 points a game, but two of the top five running backs. And it doesn't matter that he's bad at wide receiver. You can wait on tight end until round 12 and have a guy that scores nine points a game when you're lucky, but you're so awesome everywhere else. It doesn't matter. It's okay to be bad at one position. Don't, it's okay. Don't yeah. fret. I understand that, but. Running back has at least running a back points do not count for any more than wide receiver points do. They, Hold on. they... I, I'm asking a different question. Okay, sorry. You know, running back is a bit volatile because there are injuries. Yeah, there's just a lot of busts. I and mean, this is again, this was the first round uh, last year, according to Fantasy Football Calculator. McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara, Henry, Zeke. Those are your first five picks. <laughs> At running back, Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley. I, I mean, really, you could argue that Eckler was the only great pick. Not, not on a per game basis. Henry was number one per game, but Eckler was the only top eight running back of the nine who were drafted in round one last year. Round two was freaking great, though. Najee Harris, Jonathan Taylor, Antonio Gibson, he was fine. Um, Joe Mixon and Clyde Edwards-Elair was a bust. Uh, they're going to be busts. I get that. But 
Be, forget about how to build your roster. Forget about being weak at this or weak at that. Is running back, running back risky because running backs are inherently risky? Do you buy that argument? Yes. Sure. It's, it's higher upside and higher yes, and lower floor. Exactly. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's higher upside. We'll do sleepers, breakouts, and busts in a moment. We're going to take a quick break to talk about – to give you a little teaser about what's coming up on Paramount+. Plus. So we'll be right back after this short message. This summer, Paramount Plus presents the great reality escape. Let's do it. With new series. It's time to celebrate! If you get thrown in, you got to win. And new seasons to escape to. You just became my target. I have never seen such savages. <laughs> with attitudes. Give me a damn pizza! Competitions. Survivor's ready! And guilty pleasures you don't have to feel guilty about. <laughs> escape your everyday reality with our reality every day. This is big. Paramount Plus. Stream now. You may not know this about me or expect this about me, but I'm a fairly big fan of Bar Rescue. Fantastic show. I don't like bars, and I don't like uh, reality TV, but I love Bar Rescue. My favorite sleeper running back is blank. Oh, we have a graphic. Thomas, we have a graphic here. Let's put up the sleeper running backs for Dave, Jamie, and Heath. Let's take a look at who they said. But, Dave, who's your favorite sleeper running back? Right now, my favorite sleeper running back is James Robinson. I'm, uh, I'm encouraged by the progress that he's making in camp. He, I don't think he looks like a world beater as far as the looseness goes, and he's running against air. So, you know, say what you will, but at least he's on the right track. And I, I have no grandeur visions of him being the feature guy who's getting 20 plus touches a week in Jacksonville, but I do think he'll contribute a good amount, certainly more uh, than what a running back at his ADP currently would suggest. I think he's eventually going to vault up into the mid rounds. And I would be interested in him then. So I sure as hell am interested in him when you're talking round eight or later. Yeah, in NFC drafts in the last week, James Robinson is going after pick 120. And Good gravy, that's gold. Fantasy pros, he's going in round it's nine. Gold gravy. So would any of you, would either of you take, because Heath gravy. sleeper is Damian Pierce, uh, who we just briefly talked about. I'll let you talk more about him. But who would you guys rather have, James Robinson or Damian Pierce? Pierce. Robinson. All right, Heath, make the case for Pierce. He's a starting running back who, according to Fantasy Pros, is currently available in round 12. His competition is Rex Burkhead and Marlon Mack. He's got the ability to catch the football. He's going to lead the team in touches. Okay, and Jamie's sleeper is Naeem Hines, who's also going pretty late. Hines is going 136th overall. He is RB44. Who's, when was his big year? When was his big year? I do know I know that because I just tweeted about that. Um, it was 2020, and he was it, it was a pretty big difference. Um, he was RB 39, I think 10 points per game in 2018, and RB 30 on a per game basis with 12 points per game in 2020. He was RB 60 in 2019, but do you know why I know that? Why? Because of who his quarterback was in 2019. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, right? Who does not mm -hmm. really throw to running backs much. Um, uh, yeah, so Naeem Hines is Jamie's sleeper. And if we like him at 135 or whatever I said he is, yeah, 136, when do you think is the right time to take Naeem Hines? I've got him in round. I think I like him maybe even a little more than Jamie does. Dave is not on board. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm looking at early round twelve. I <laughs> in full PPR. Or early round nine for me. Okay. Would you take Naheem Hines or James Cook? Cook Hines right now. Ooh, wow. Okay. Um. All right. Let's uh. Let's talk about breakouts. I do. I keep forgetting though. Um. Ah, we'll do it after breakouts. All right. Let's talk about our favorite breakouts. Dave, you can start. Who's your favorite breakout this year? My favorite breakout this year is A.J. Dillon. I don't think he's necessarily the most obvious one, but his floor is still pretty good. I think his floor is going to be around 12 PPR points per week. He's still going to get, I believe, double-digit touches every single game. I think he's a contender for short yardage touches and certainly goal line work in Green Bay. I think he can catch the ball a little bit, too. We've made a lot of talk about Aaron Jones being potentially the top pass catcher in Green Bay, and that might be true. 
But Aaron, A.J. Dillon could end up being third on the team in catches. I, I think he's got a great shot, even with Aaron Jones on the field, to be a number two fantasy running back. And if Aaron Jones misses time, say he goes to Hawaii or he does a lot of community service work, maybe he wins Powerball. Uh, A.J. Dillon would be a number one fantasy running back. So he he's kind of turned into the new Kareem Hunt. Remember when everybody was oh, totally fine with drafting Kareem Hunt, even though he was playing by Nick Chubb? I think Dylan is that guy now. And I think this offense, given the wide receiving core, I think it makes sense for them to lean on these running backs a little bit more than they have in the past. There's a reason why Aaron Rodgers isn't a top 10 quarterback for us anymore. I could see A.J. Dillon having a really strong year with upside to be uh, an amazing fantasy running back. Heath, you're taking J.K. Dobbins as your breakout, and he is expected uh, making good progress. Very good chance, I guess, at this point to be ready for week one. He's off the pup list. Maybe on track for week one sure. is there the is way better. to say it. Oh, oh, something can go wrong, and he might be a breakout that starts in week four. I will accept the fact that maybe week one he's not quite 100% himself. But 80% of J.K. Dobbins is better than 80% of the running backs in the NFL. He is an elite, elite talent. Mr. YPC for life average six point. He is YPC for life. 6.2 yards per carry in college. 6.0 his rookie year on the Ravens. His final six games of his rookie season, he was on pace for 1,400 yards rushing and 20 touchdowns. They spent all last offseason showing us highlight videos of J.K. Dobbins catching the football. And then Lamar Jackson's last year threw the ball to running backs at a higher rate than he ever had. Dobbins is going to have more catches than what you expect, and he's going to be better than Nick Chubb once he's 100%. I remember getting excited about a player who did well in the first six, last six games of his rookie season. but uh, Not, Well, he, he was... Um, he was a top eight running back in those games. He was catching the ball that. a lot too. Yeah, he was I Miles Sanders, of course. But that was two years ago. There's no reason to hold on to it anymore. Well, I get that. I get. Well, if we're talking about him in round seven or something, I think it's fine. I'm not taking him in round five or round round three. I mean, and I don't know. think did he average six yards per carry that year. No, he definitely did not average six yards per carry. Are we sure that Dobbins is the same running back? Well, medical, you know, Doctor Chow, who I think is great at this. Uh, you know, he's mm-hmm. one of those. You know, Sports doctor. He was the team physician for the Chargers. Um, he's been on our show before. He's skeptical. no. He's very good at this. You're he's right. Very skeptical of, of J.K. Dobbins' recovery. Um, although I, I feel like Dobbins is beating his projection for returning, but I think he feels like Dobbins is going to struggle a little bit. I don't want to misquote him, so I'll try to look it up. But I think we've seen that. We saw that. We we read that, right? I think so. Heath not throwing caution to the wind. Um, I, I'm not throwing caution to the wind. If I was, I'd have him at the two, three turn where I think he belongs. If he's hundred percent healthy. Yeah. Find the pro football doc talking about JK Dobbins. I got it here. Uh, Jamie's breakout. As I read this is Travis Etienne. question. Can Travis Etienne be great? If James Robinson is healthy in PPR, he could be because he could end up having 80 catches. The thing that I worry about with Etienne is how many touchdowns. Can he score if if James Robinson's there? Because he doesn't seem like a – he seems like an interesting fit when you get to short yardage. Like there's ways you can scheme him up, but he's not the type of back that's going to plow for you from a yard out. That's that's James Robinson. I, I, I will, bet that's something will, James Robinson can do right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say the same thing that Jamie said when I said Brees Hall as a breakout. I definitely think <laughs> Travis Etienne is going to have the best year of his career. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dr. Chow, I don't have it specifically, but I know he's been a little, little bit of a pump the brakes on Dobbins because it was a pretty serious injury. It was multiple ligaments or, you know, multiple issues in the knee. All right, let's talk about busts here and, um, let's bring up that graphic. Let's see busts for everybody here. Heath, you can start. Who's going to be a bust at running back this year? Uh, yeah, well, I've got, I've got a lot of busts and I've said Najee Harris a lot. So I'm going to say somebody different this time. I'm going to go with Damian Harris looking at his fantasy pros PPR ADP. It's at the end of round five. You should not expect him to score touchdowns at the rate he did last year. I expect him to come very close to a 50, 50 split in the running game with Ramondre Stevenson, and he's not going to be the running back playing on passing downs. And there's been a lot of reports about how bad this Patriots offense has been because, shocker, they put Matt Patricia in charge of the offense, and he's not an offensive coordinator. So So, I think it might all be a disaster in New England. It actually, 
the report started off glowing about this offense, and then they they've like changed they put on their pads. running scheme. <laughs> hmm? Then they, they started they playing against the defense. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But apparently, like, they've tried changing their running scheme, and maybe they're just experimenting, and this is a weird time of the year to do that. But I've read those reports, too. It's a little scary. I wanted to ask you before I gave my answer, Heath, because I, I don't mind Damian Harris. He's one of those fallback running backs uh, that, that I wouldn't mind drafting as an early season starter. Where would you take Damian Harris in PPR? In full PPR, I wouldn't take him until round eight or nine. Okay, and I'm taking him at least one round ahead of you. I, I would take him in round seven. What do you think the chances are no injuries? Because I this is where I struggle. What do you think the chances are that Ramondre Stevenson is better than Damian Harris this year with no injuries? No, I don't think he will be. Even well, in there's full a chance, PPR. Though. It's the Patriots. Uh, with no injuries, I, I'll put it at like 20%. that Because they were like 45, 45 in the, they in the were. split. Yeah. They were. Go back and see who was more efficient in short yardage and who had more opportunities in short yardage, and that'll tell the tale. I think Stevenson had five touchdowns last year, and four of them were when Harris was either hurt or it was a blowout, and they didn't put Harris in, and they just let Ramondre do his thing. And if that carries over, that's obviously going to hurt Ramondre's opportunities to score. We need Ramondre Stevenson to be the passing downs guy for him to be um, – I, I still think he's worth his ADP – a li- what it, if if his ADP is right around 90th, um, his he's still worth it there even if he doesn't take over the James White role. But so you're taking every- Stevenson where I'm taking Harris. Stevenson's yeah, ADP but, is 113th. Okay, in PPR, I don't, even if he's not the next James White, I don't mind taking Ramondre Stevenson there because it's a bet against Damian Harris, and he is going to get work each week. Harris is not going to be the feature back unless he's in a game and he just has a hot hand. Then he will be. We're never going to know that going in, and just because he has it one week doesn't mean he's going to be that way the next week. But a lot of people love Ramondre. Jamie's one of those people. I don't mind Ramondre Stevenson, but if you're taking him before 90th overall, you're that crazy about him, you better hope that he's catching 40 passes this year, and you better hope that Damian Harris struggles in short yardage situations to open the door for Stevenson. We're going to continue this discussion uh, in just a moment. We do have to squeeze in a break here. We'll be right back to talk about more busts on fantasy football today. I actually want to jump right back in as we welcome you back to FFT. We've got a, oh, 10, 15 minutes left or so. I want to jump right back into this discussion about the Patriots running backs. Why no, Why are we talking about Ramondre Stevenson as the passing downs back? How realistic do you think that is? First of all, James White might not be ready for the start of the season, but he's, I don't think he's going to miss the, full, the whole season. And when he comes back, that's going to be his role. And Pierre Strong might be the third down back. I, mean, I think Ramondre Ty Montgomery Stevenson. is currently the third I think down Ty back. Montgomery's ahead of Strong. Right. So how how on earth could either Harris or Stevenson be consistent enough in that role? I mean, it's not going to be Harris. And I think there were two games last year where Ramondre Stevenson had, you know, a decent amount of catches. I'm, that's off the top of my head. But obviously he didn't catch the ball much. So I, I don't really get that. You're not the first person to say it. I just don't know where it's coming from that Ramondre Stevenson uh, would be the third down. I think it's because he had 18 catches in six games um, at Oklahoma as part of it. Like he has the ability yeah, the pro- to do it. Part of it's the profile. He's a big bruiser. I mean, he doesn't look like that kind of guy to me, but I don't know. Um, Same big guys it, can't catch. <laughs> just, I just, you don't see, I, I'm you not don't drafting any of the Patriots like running backs. That so. in, yeah. You don't see big guys like that in the passing game that often as the third down back. It's just feels, feels like that's, not really going to happen. And yeah, they had exactly in their last five games that they played together were neither left with an injury. Harris and Stevenson had basically the same amount of carries 50 for Harris, 52 for Stevenson. That's the thing is like if it's full PPR and you're splitting carries and you're not catching passes, right. Right. then why do I want you on my team? Because you're going to score a lot of touchdowns. And that's, that's what Maybe. Harris offers you have double digit touchdown potential. Dave, you've been calling Cam Akers a bust for. A long, long time now. Mm-hmm. So you say I'm in the 70s? I'm 70th. Okay. Which means I'm not taking him. It's basically my way of of uh, suggesting that you just don't even bother taking Cam Akers. Heath, do you agree with that? No. Um, I, I've gone back and forth on Akers. I've never had him that low. I'm somewhere around 60 and then I'm around 45 and then I'm around 60, depending on, I just don't, I don't totally believe 
what Sean McVay said because of what Sean McVay has done. And um, I think Akers has a lot more upside than somebody like Damian Harris. Okay, and Jamie's bus is Antonio Gibson. So his ADP is pretty interesting. I don't think anyone's taking him where he's going, which is 40th overall. But if he starts to fall to... I've got him around 40th. Overall, you do? Yeah. I didn't know you were a Gibson guy. Cause on, uh, since I didn't know August I was 1st, either until now, but... Since August 1st on NFC, Antonio Gibson's average draft position is 64th. He is behind A.J. Dillon. Um, so go ahead, Heath. Uh, why is why is he worth a fourth-round pick? Um, well, I mean, he's been a borderline number one running back each of the last two years. Yeah, I... Okay, that works for me. <laughs> he's finished even, even on a per game 19th. basis, he was he was a mid mid range number two, right? And, and we're drafting twenty five running backs in the first four rounds. He should probably be one of them. All right. So, how do you guys want to end this show tomorrow? We're gonna go through ADP and just talk about everyone. What do you think? Should we kind of sum things do up? We, do we have five minutes? Yeah. You want to do one of those? speed round things. Oh, I have that in the notes. Yeah, I was gonna skip it, but sure we can get we can do it. All, all my right. all my all my DC listeners. Speed round. Fifteen running backs in five minutes, starting with the round two running backs, not the round one guys. Fifteen running backs in five minutes, picks fourteen through forty nine in ADP. So this is basically rounds two through four in a twelve team league. Here we go. Dave DeAndre Swift. Huge upside top five fantasy running back upside downside is injuries Expect him to catch a ton of passes this year. Nick Chubb. Heath. Really worried Jacoby Brissett's going to have the same impact on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt that he did on Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines. Would not okay, take I mean, him as a top 12 running back. Oh, okay. Would you take him as a, like a top 15 running back? Or do you have him 16th Chubb? in full PPR. In a more optimistic picture, picture, the Browns running backs have felt to me a little bit quarterback proof what do you think baker mayfield even last year was better than jacoby Brissett is. yeah but they were great even when baker mayfield didn't play and those quarterbacks were terrible like i said they didn't throw for 200 yards in any of those three games they, they had they played three games without baker mayfield last year they were awesome in one they were bad in one and then the other was week 18 when they were really really good but it was the Bengals when they weren't playing for anything yeah so i don't um, know well but they weren't bad in that in that Denver game. I mean, Denver had four carries for 89 yards. Yeah, he struggled a little bit, but he had 24 carries. Most weeks, if you give Nick Chubb 24 carries, well, Kareem Hunt played, wasn't there. That is true, but they they ran the ball a lot. The running back. I think they're going to run the ball a lot. I don't know that they're going to score that many touchdowns or get that many targets. All right. Uh, next up is Alvin Kamara, Dave. Bounce back year in terms of passing game work. Uh, had a career year as far as a rushing, as far as rushing goes for him. Looks like he's going to play 17 games. He is still worth a first round pick. Looks like he's not going to be suspended, is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's Alvin Kamara. Let's go to Javante Williams, Heath. I've got him in my top 12, and I'm probably going to move Barkley ahead of him. The drumbeat remains that he and Melvin Gordon are going to split closer than 60 40. You probably need a Melvin Gordon injury for Javante Williams to return profit. How Share about? Monte. Oh, this is the guy. This guy, I would say, based on his ADP, is the centerpiece of my fantasy drafts. Aaron Jones is going 20th overall. And I will take him basically anywhere in round two. <laughs> so 13th overall, you know. Um, Dave, what are your thoughts on Aaron Jones? I have him 12th in my PPR rankings. I have him ahead of Nick Chubb. I think he's got a shot to have 50 plus receptions, certainly have a lot of long touchdowns as well as maybe some short touchdowns. He was good in that role. Just AJ Dillon's better built for it. And he'll be the lead running back in an offense that should be a little more running centric this year. Yeah. And that's, if you believe in the ADP and you believe you can get Aaron Jones in round two, then you might make your decision easier in round one if you're trying to decide between Justin Jefferson and Joe Mixon or Jamar Chase and Dalvin Cook or something like that. And if you want to balance, go ahead, yeah. May I add one last thing on Aaron Jones? Mm -hmm. 
past three years, he's finished 13th, 5th, and 3rd in PPR points per game among running backs. You are drafting him close to that floor. Right. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Fournette, Heath. Back in shape. Top 12 running back. Tom Brady loves him. Saquon Barkley, Dave. Brian Dayball loves him. Feature back in the offense. Fingers crossed, no freak injuries. Top five running back potential. I will say, like, the, the thing about the Barkley one is, does he have any of – it looks like he has the elite volume. Does he have any of the three elites was my question. Um, elite volume and elite talent. I think he still has elite talent. Well, I was wasn't one of these three, yeah. <laughs> and so is that the efficiency, Dave, you're going with? He's, he'll be elite? Efficiency. I think he can be – can I say elite efficiency? I don't know. I don't know if he can be. He can be better than he's been, but I don't know if he can be elite in terms of efficiency anymore. But the talent is really good, and I think the Giants are going to lean on it quite a bit. I do think that, it's fair. He's, if we're he's going been to a top twelve running back for me for a while. The same running back that we might ask if Saquon Barkley is the same running back. But at least we're seeing. I think we're closer to getting a positive answer on Dobbins than we were a week ago because uh, I, he's off the pup list. We're seeing it with Saquon. That. It's different, though, Heath, because Barkley is so much farther removed from his major knee surgery. Right, but I'm right. saying he hasn't been the same running back since. He, we've seen Barkley yeah. play games and not be the same running back. That's why I'm saying I, I don't doubt that he's the same running back he was last year. That's not the same guy. As that, that's not, the that's not who we're drafting. I think, I, think the Bar I think what we've seen from Barkley is probably what would make people nervous about Dobbins. You know, if Dobbins has a slow recovery... The way Barkley. Well, yeah. I mean, if Dobbins has two or three more injuries, that's also it, true. I would get very worried. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, speed it up here. By the way, Barkley or Fournette, who do you like better? Fournette, Fournette by one notch. Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott, Heath. Man, there's underrated upside, but if he gets dinged again, or if Jerry Jones loses his say, then it could be Tony Tollard's <laughs> job. Um, but man, I, I, you know about a guy who could be top five. Zeke's it. James Conner, Dave. Jerry Jones losing his say. That's a good one. Uh, did he die? James Conner has injury downside. Yeah. And Cliff Kingsbury on Sirius XM NFL radio said that they need to kind of monitor it. I'll send the quote out today, but otherwise, ginormous upside we saw it last year when he's healthy he can be a feature back in in a really good offense this is one of those running backs that you can look at in round three and say i'll take him david montgomery heath man you're about underrated um we'll, we'll see how much he has to share with khalil herbert but feels pretty safe to me as a high-end number two running back and if this offense could be average he could be top 10 you could get him in round four he's a late round three picker. i got him in round five in a draft last night that's wild. Uh, you can't get him around five. You can get him around four. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> you can't do that again. <laughs> Cam Akers is uh, is actually in the league too. that you took two running backs in the first two rounds. What Rasball? Yep. Yeah, I know they fall. Those running backs fall. Um, I'll skip Cam Akers. We talked about him. Oh, Antonio Gibson. I'll skip as well. Josh Jacobs, Dave. He's going to be part of a committee. It's going to be frustrating. We don't know how much the coach truly loves him. Spoiler, he doesn't. Could end up being an okay number two fantasy running back, but he's going to make you take a Tums at some point during the year. And Elijah Mitchell, Heath. Another guy with upside that we're just kind of discounting because of what his coach has done in the past and the fast they just drafted another running back. If Elijah Mitchell can stay healthy, he could be a top 12 running back. He might not start week one. I have Gibson. <laughs> I think he starts week one. I feel pretty good about him starting week one. I've got Gibson, Jacobs, Mitchell back to back to back in my running back rankings. And I'm telling you, sometimes I feel like I could just close my eyes and like pick any one of them out of a bag. And uh, I'd feel cool with him being first among those three. And do you have but, Dylan ahead of them? Uh, no, they're, he's right behind them. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much uh, for Running Back Preview Part 1. Tomorrow is Part 2, where we'll take you through average draft position, tell you who we like, tell you who we don't. Uh, for Dave and Heath and our new producer, Thomas Schaefer, I'm Adam Azer. Talk to you tomorrow on Fantasy Football Today.